we are we're we are here. We are Whoa. Uh, we're here to talk uh you know Rams football. And uh man, uh we're we're excited. I got my guy the Dark Saber. If you guys know him, you probably know him because he's been in the comments section, everyone. Um, I'm everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how you doing, man? Welcome. Ah, doing pretty good. Ugh. Busy, busy bee. As simple as I can put that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, SWB I feel that. Audio um, capture now, not registered. Let's uh, let's talk because there's a lot going on here. Um, a lot to unpack with yesterday's game, and furthermore. Uh, we just found out some unfortunate news about Justin Hollins, um, who does not sound like he is going to be he's going to be hurt um, and he's not going to be able to play the, the next bunch of weeks. He's going to be out for the foreseeable future. So guys, of course, are going to have to step up in a next man up kind of setting. Um, you know, obviously a guy by the name of Terrell Lewis, you would expect. Um, another one is a guy by the name of, uh, well, you know, Obanayo Karanko, who's, you know, slated to come off, um, you know, injured reserve. And on top of that, you have the rookie Chris Garrett, who could get a serious opportunity, as well as Justin Lawler, who did break his hand, but he has it in a cast and he can play with that. Um, so they have guys. But uh, look, um, what do you think is the best approach dealing with this type of injury? Do you think it's best to just shut down Hollins for the season do you think it's best to just, you know, wait and see, keep him on IR? And who do you think would replace him? Hmm. Well, I don't know how how bad I don't know if they said how bad it was for his injury. He has to have surgery on his pectoral, sucks. which is not good. Like it sucks, but I know some people who went through injuries that were it was a bad location, but they were able to work themselves through. So it all depends on how he's doing. But if he's doing like if he like if he's feeling bad for a bit, I'd give to him like that time to just rest, rest and heal up. If not, like I said, we have good people on you know for our backups. They're really good, especially when he saw what was it? Um, I put uh, darn it, what was his name? Uh, was it Garrett? Uh, Chris yeah. Garrett. Yeah, you could probably put him in there. I like SWB him. Oh, when audio I saw him capture him, I loved him. not registered. Like, it would be nice to see him actually playing on the field. It would be really good. But replacing him, I, I, Hollins is really good. Especially like I saw him last week. That was really good. Especially when it come down to, you know, third down stops. It was good. Like, it just sucks that he's kind of gone. But I, I hope he can come back in this season. It would be nice to see him come back. But The word usage was interesting. A substantial amount of time. So it, it doesn't sound like he's out for the year, which is surprising because I feel like pectoral tears or anything like that, um, which I don't know exactly what it was. I just know that he's having surgery to repair his pectoral. Um, but I, I just think that, you know, looking at that anyway, if if you're saying it's a substantial amount of time, I don't think he's gone for the year. So that that's a good thing, I guess. The unfortunate thing is that he was playing good football, like you mentioned. Now, you do have, you know, Chris Garrett. You can get him some key snaps as a rookie. Um, <clears throat> you know, I think Okoronkwo and Lewis are going to kind of rotate uh, when Okoronkwo comes back from the IR. Um, the problem is, like Julio is mentioning here, Obo gets, always gets injury. Um, that, that's true. Okoronko has a hard time staying healthy. Terrell Lewis has a hard time staying healthy. Uh, Lawler has a hard time staying healthy. So <clears throat> then you have the, the ankle injury um, that Floyd was playing through. So all of a sudden, a guy coming off your COVID IR, Chris Garrett, is the least likely to get injured, your rookie. So there could be a trade. There could be uh, you know a claim. There, there could be a signing off a practice squad. I wouldn't you know, put it past the Rams because this depth is cool and all as long as no one gets hurt, but you're That's dealing with a thing. lot of guys, you know, a bunch of guys here that could get hurt. SWB audio it sucks, capture, the same thing not with, like, registered. You know, Terrell Lewis. If we lost him, it's, an, it's another good guy that we, you know, we can have like, it, it would suck. But like, so we have depth. Um, I don't know who we'd have left on the practice squad to put in a positions like that, but You'd be looking at like Ernest Brown at that point. 
who I don't think is ready to compete this year. He's gonna say I might give him some more time so he can have to you know figure out his own you know way of playing. Yeah, no. the rookies right now. I don't know. They're kind of like playing iffy. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a little concerned about that. I'm not going to lie. Um, you know, I, I think <clears throat> when you look at it, um, the Rams came away with that game pretty well intact aside from that, you know, with, with that speaking. There's not a ton of injury. This is a big one. This is a big blow. You hate to see a starter. But if you're looking on the, the side of being uh, you know, feeling somewhat confident, feeling somewhat uh, optimistic, it was only one injury. It wasn't a bevy. And this league, man, I don't know if you watched all of week three, but I watched most of the games, and I can tell you right now, it was injury after injury after injury. Uh, I've so hearing it, about a lot of them. Yeah, so it's good it's to bad. escape with only, you know, one there. Uh, albeit, I hate any time there's an injury, uh, you know, to say that. Especially for a man <laughs> coming up in the season. Like, he's playing pretty good. <laughs> Yeah, no, I feel that. So who who's standing out, to, uh, you know, in your opinion, uh, so far early on in the year? On what defense or just their offense or on you know in general? I'm oh, just saying when you want to talk about because this is of course you know you're running the show again. <laughs> uh, reason being, guys, this is uh, this is my guy, Dark Saber. He is a platinum member, just like Ram Fan Ashton. I have two platinum members. I have 18 total members. Uh, so if you are interested in hosting a show with me, it is nine ninety nine a month to be SWB a platinum audio member. Captured, Eventually, if we get enough, registered. we're going to be doing roundtables. Um, every that, month. Actually, that'd be fun. Yeah, so I think we'll, <laughs> that'd be fun. I think we'll do Ooh. that next time because uh, I love that idea. Um, but yeah, if anyone's interested, uh, the link is in the description. So it's your show. You go right ahead. You steer. Well, let's see. Like. I think Matthew Stafford, one of the biggest ones you could say that is really good to see, especially like there were certain things that I, I hate people putting out as being like, it's his fault. He, he's throwing a little bit bad. You know, I, I don't see this being his fault. He got hit most of the time when he was throwing like to see, see the deep balls to, um, to Jackson. It wasn't necessarily his fault. Like people would look at this incomplete. It's bad. No, you can look at how it's, you know, how it's going. You're getting hit when he was throwing deep. It's not like he can figure out those things. Even then, he launches the ball for 75 yards and gets a touchdown with the thing. That's where things go with it. Like, I have to put it, our offensive line. They're playing. Like, they're going to play really good, even though we lost a few, you know, a few people. But they're still playing. You know, I would say at an elite level right now, but they're kind of like in the middle of, you know, between being good and you know, being kind of bad. But I wouldn't say too much bad. Um, yeah, receivers are just great, especially Cooper Cup. He leads, you know, the league. You know, interception yards. I love that. That's great to see. Just a, you know, a guy who they didn't expect to be, you know, up there. There's fast guys in this league. And they aren't. They aren't to that level. I think he's thirty. He's thirty yards, like I think above, like the like person that's right next to him. So yeah, he has the triple crown right now for receivers. He leads the league in receiving touchdowns, receiving yards, and receptions. So. He's tied for Man, the lead out. in receptions with uh, Devontae uh, Adams with 25. But, hey, that's still leading. So, You think about it with Devontae <laughs> Adams. Man, that's really good to be competing with that man when it comes down to stats and stuff like that. That's really good. Yeah. He's a really good man. SWB audio <laughs> well, captured, now, not <clears> registered. You know, people are concerned about the run game. What did you think about this? Uh, what did you think about the run game in this? Because, to be honest with you, you know, I didn't think – in a down-to-down -down basis, in a snap-to-snap -snap basis, Sony Michelle played a good football game. On the stat say, sheet, yeah, played really good. Three point three point one yards per carry isn't very good, but down-to-down, snap-to-snap, I thought Sony Michelle was what the Rams needed uh, to relieve Daryl Henderson, who I think, you know, some people were like, "Yeah, it wasn't a big deal not having Hendo." Uh, on the first, um, the first screen pass, the slip screen to Sony Michelle. I missed Henderson right off the bat because you could see he's quick. He sees a hole and he hits it. Sony Michelle was kind of, you know, gingerly moving down the field. Doesn't have the short area burst does not have uh, that, you know, that long speed that Henderson has where he could have, you know, slipped through, you know, those two guys in front of him. But Michelle, I thought was uh, interesting, especially in um, pass pro. You know, I don't know if you saw that, that play that went absolutely viral on Twitter, 
the guy was trying to jump up in the air and swat down the uh, Stafford pass, and Sony Michelle hit him in midair and just destroyed him. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, that was – that was not a concern of mine, but it's one of those things where I think Henderson is very underrated as a uh, in, in pass pro, and I feel like Sony Michelle is also somewhat underrated, and he kind of established that in this one. Well, like Sony Michelle, I think he did good for the simple fact that he got us what we needed. Like you know, the yards looked bad. Well, not yards looked bad. Like the yards per carry looked kind of bad. Like you even said with it, tough defense like, too. So, yeah, you think about it for something like that, and we still got our first downs. We still got what we needed with them. So I wouldn't say it's bad. It wasn't. He wouldn't. He didn't play like horrible. That's the sucks. The fact that like screen passes or just screens in general that like, can go towards our running backs, they won't really work the best. I think give them time. Double the audio out the capture, it, I not registered. Use them like that as much. Like I think they used them, but that's why I, I was even telling one of my friend about it. It was like they, the Patriots never really had that like star position for running backs. Like they had a good people, but they never used them well. Like they were kind of like, yeah, here you go. And then you leave them go. But like they weren't the best, but you give them time. <clears throat> like for us, like I love, like, I don't know. I kind of put like Henderson as like that little, you know, Todd Gurley type of deal. He's like that one good dude. I really like him. Like I always play him, especially in Madden or something like that. I usually have him <laughs> as a running back. I like him. He usually does what I need to in that game, and I can usually break the game, so I like having him. Um, However, this offense, can you imagine if this offense had in his prime without any injury Todd Gurley? No, oh, one, yeah. no one would stop this offense. Oh. No <laughs> like, one would stop the this The run offense. game would be amazing, and even on that, like even small passes could be like you know 18 yards, 20 yards, even, even further if he didn't have that injury. It did suck when I, when I heard about those injuries coming in. Oh, it was it sucked, yeah. <laughs> especially seeing him now. He just is a diminished man. Doesn't really have much of a career. Yeah, I'm hoping sucks. I'm hoping he can catch on with another team. Uh, right now, he is a free agent. So the Rams they won 34 24. They silenced the haters at least for now at three and zero. Now, do you want to talk more about this game, or do you want to talk a little bit about what's coming up with the Arizona Cardinals? Uh, we can stick with this game for a bit. Like, I, I kind of watched it for a bit, like. I'm gonna watch it for a bit. Watch the entire game, at least if I, if I could. My stupid uh, TV kept messing up when it comes down to the, my <laughs> provider for it. Hulu doesn't work the best, but they, it gets the job done. Um, I think I ended up coming in like middle or like beginning ish of the first quarter, but I still got most of the game through. But I I love the game, especially seeing the SWB defense. Audio they came capture, in and were stopping, like, not were registered, play, especially against the person you know who's supposedly the best man in the entire league. You know, I don't know. I think I think we did really good against it. They people I remember hearing the same people too, they're talking about, oh, he threw really good. He had four you know like what almost over four hundred yards. Like it's good. But it did absolutely nothing. <laughs> like you can throw for so many yards and you can still lose. Like Yeah, what what was it? Shannon Sharp called it empty calories. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's a great way like, to put it. Like it's, it looks good. He has no touchdown, which I love because it just makes his stuff go down and come to stats. People get closer to him, then. but like he didn't deserve anything at that point. It's funny, the simple fact he was their leading, you know, like rusher. I think that's funny. Oh, it's hilarious! <laughs> this, this old man is their leading rusher. <laughs> I don't know how that's possible. <laughs> Possible when you abandon the run as early on as they did. They basically tried to run it with Fournette. They tried to run it with Ronald Jones. They saw, nope, okay, we're not going to do that today. And then they <laughs> just abandoned it. They just completely got rid of it. I barely saw runs from them. When they did, it was like, I think they had like one that went kind of far. But it wasn't like he broke free for anything. He just went forward a bit more. Like, it wasn't much. No, like, I feel that. Now, with this game, you know, this defense, I think... I think this defense is showing you that they're very much on the same level Staley was last season. I made a video about that earlier today. Now, here's the thing. Um, can this defense be better than last year? Or, like, did, did I underestimate them in saying that they're going to be top 10? And could they actually be number one and even better? Or do you see them kind of not being as good but still being a really good unit? I see them sticking 
in between like a top five. I, I can't see him being too high up there. SWB being first. audio like, we're, capture. We're playing not good, registered. But we are to the point where we're like shutting down people completely. Like you saw with the Colts, we were able, you know they were throwing for pretty deep. Before, like last year, there wasn't as many like you know big plays like that from our defense. We killed people. Like we were pretty good at stopping people. Like I don't know. I, this is only three games. Um, but like I think our defense can get up there. I think it can get up to top five. But if there if there's more, if we can beat, I think like next week because their defense is really good when it comes to the Cardinals. If we can beat them, that kind of shows us what we can do with things. That's that's going against their you know Cardinals offense, which is more mobile. So it'd be nice to see what we can do against everybody, especially on how you know we like to play with things. I don't want to be too conservative with our plays, um, but I, like I said I think we can make it get to a top five. If we get the top, you know, one or two, that I I, I give I would be okay with that. <laughs> yeah. But I give it. I said I think I give it up to that position where it's at because like when he, when our new guy came in, it was it's it's a hard thing to come with, you know. Last year we were top, we were number one. Now he has to come in and make it be almost near the same, if not even better. That's, that's a tough thing to put. Like we got really good guys. I you know even with some of our like what people call the lower people, the people you don't really see, they still play pretty good. Like when they want to play, they will play. Like that's what I kind of put. Like if we get injured, it's gonna suck, but we can usually have guys come right back up and or at least from our you know our second string or even the third string, they can play really good. Well, and like, you, you, yeah, exactly. You, you hit on it because you have a coaching staff like the, the staff that the Rams have, and then you have the players that the Rams have, and it's like constantly the Rams are getting an opportunity since they do the first and second team against each other and, and what have you. They have an opportunity to play against the best players in the league. I mean, when you talk about how much of – uh, how much it means to go SW, up against Jalen Ramsey and Aaron Donald in practice registered. when you're the number two uh, team and you're going out there and you're, you know, John Wolford in the backup running back, whether it be Jake Funk or whether it's Xavier Jones in practice or whatever, uh, you know, earlier in the year. And then the receivers, you know, Ben Skoranek going one-on-one against Jalen Ramsey. I mean, these guys, iron sharpens iron, and these guys are getting great reps every day in practice you know, going the, the twos versus the ones and the one versus the twos and so forth. So uh, I do like the way they do that. Um, it gives them an opportunity to really see everything. And I think that's why guys all of a sudden when they come to the Rams and they get an opportunity to start like a Kenny Young, like a Troy Reader, what have you, they look good. They look comfortable. And I think that's a big thing, you know, at least in my, at least in my head anyway, um, you know, and why I believe that. So, yeah, well, it's oh, like you know, I kind of put it as you're, you're calming some of these people down. Like, some of these people are really, really good. Like, when it comes down to some people, like, um, what is it? Uh, with Ramsey, I mean, man's tough. He can be really aggressive with things, and we, we keep him calm down. We keep him playing these things, and he's being aggressive, and he's winning. He's winning us games. Like, you know, same with Aaron Donald. Like, I, I put this defense as being a complete stoppage of some of these people. I think some people are more mobile might might do something, but I don't know. So I want to see what happens the next week. With next week, um, because I don't know their defense looks really tough. I don't know. That's from the first game they played. I didn't really watch too much of their game to see if they are like a, a good enough team to for everyone to you know beat, but. Um, I don't know. Our offense is basically going to be pretty good for most of the, you know, most of the uh, season. I don't know about picks, though. I hope that doesn't happen. If you yeah. see a pick, you know, it's going to go exploding. It's like, it's like one of them when he ended up throwing a pick. Um, SWB audio capture not registered. It was Discord, and it was just like, oh, no, it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, no. No, I know. I mean, you never want to throw interceptions, right? No, but, no, but it's, you know. Like, he, he just got here, and he's, like, he's getting to know his system, and people are already putting him out as if he's garbage. <laughs> like, oh, I hear you. Well, I, I mean, mean, I think it's hilarious. You, you think about it, and he's got nine touchdowns, one interception. He's on pace for around kind of where I projected him to be. 
I had him throwing 51 touchdowns, nine interceptions, and over 5,000 yards. Right now, he's on pace, I think, over 5,300. Cooper Cup is on pace to break the, the receiving record. Oh, no. Do you think any of those things happen? Do you think that Cooper Cup would break the receiving record oh, this season? He should. Like, he's... Really? He's been he's been thrown to it most of the time. Unless it's like it gets slower and slower and he doesn't get more open and people shut him down, then maybe. But he's I mean, Cuff's been getting open most of the time. And then like there's certain plays where it could have been maybe a little bit overthrown and it's just kind of bobbled. But even then, he has the ability to just keep on going. <laughs> like he could play deep a bit. Like I, if he, if, he, if he gets open, basically an easy play. And most of the people he's been playing against, he gets open. Like, there are occasionally where he get, does get stopped, but there's more, someone else to throw it to. And he <laughs> like, gets, he gets open because of his, you know, his route running ability too. You know, I think a lot of people don't realize yeah. how, like, why he's so wide open. I mean, he just does, you know, the little nuances in his route running. It's just so impressive. So, you know, like uh, Boondy just said below, there's a great connection with Cup and staff. Now, I want to touch a little bit on uh, some of these questions, so I'm going to read them. Um, just to catch up a little bit. What's up, William Masanori, Young Ham? How we doing, Scott? What's up, uh, Rakeem? How we doing? Um, SWB audio capture. Wild Not Man registered. Samurai, if you're still here, what's up, Terrence? CD Lamb gonna go off tonight? I think he could. Uh, what's up, Holden? Uh, Glaciers, Julio, Chris, appreciate you all. P Train, um, Chantry, appreciate you guys. KMG, Rusty. Carney, Mike, Will, I see cool. all of you. Uh, let's go back to this. Um, let's see here. We have – this is an interesting one from uh, Chris Calabrese. Uh, if Cup is consistent the next few years, a case can be made for the Hall of Fame, especially if he starts breaking some yards after catch records. That is a good one. Uh, let's see here. Scott had an interesting one earlier. Uh, let's go even farther than the Cardinals. The Cardinals, Seahawks, Giants, Lions, Texans, Titans. Are we a nine and zero football team? I believe so. What do, What do you think? So what What do you think, Dark Saber? I think I think it's gonna be pretty good. Like if I go back to my little list of you know playoff stuff. Um, I don't, I don't have them losing to too many people, and even then, I think they'll be a close game. At this point, I actually think they're going to beat most of the people. Um, I just hope you know it doesn't go to the point where people start giving up and like you know they kill themselves with it. But like I think, I think the ones that are going to be tough is going to be the Packers, the 49ers, and the Texans. Not the Texans. Oh, sorry, um, Titans. Um, oh yeah, I think I those gonna are going to be like the, the Texans, very strong. I actually think they could be a strong team if you know, poor little Taylor was alive. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, he's really good. It, it sucks. I I like the man. It just he's like <laughs> the one that I think was last year. He gets his lungs get punctured. I know <laughs> that just sucks. Like it gave um uh herbert a good play swb like, audio good capture things, but, not man, registered that sucked like and he was playing he played really good um with the texans but i don't know we should be able to wipe them it's sad but i we should be able to wipe them but i was i forgot i meant to say the uh titans but i like i said i don't know they could it should i kind of put those as being weird weird plays of games but I don't know. I think we can beat most people here. They're pretty much going to be easy games. Uh, I call them easy games, but then you know you get games like the Raiders and the uh, Raiders and the Dolphins, and they somehow get it to the point where it's a close game. I. It's true. The, the Dolphins. The Dolphins are a good team. The problem is, it's like they had their backup quarterback, which he's good. You know, Jacoby Brissett. He he could be good, but I don't know. They're, the Raiders' defense is really good, and they just it looked it didn't look good. It should have been that close, but I don't know. At this point, like, like one of my guys at work said, you know, no game in this league is going to be easy. So I, I don't know. Anything, anything can happen. But I, I see us being you know, top of the league, and oh, I just hope my predictions are right because, like I said, <laughs> most of my predictions everyone else agreed with, except for like a few people. Like I said, with the um, the Panthers, I was. 
surprised no one thought, whoa, you know, they're, they're playing good. I think I was right. Yeah, we talked about that off air. We thought the Panthers would both go. Both of us thought they'd go eleven and six. I, I think it's fun. We said it exact same time. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Now with the uh, now with the Rams. Um, so you know, we talked about the Justin Hollins injury, which is mm-hmm. really unfortunate. He is going to be placed on IR, um, which I would imagine is going to mean that Okoronkwo will come back this week in all likelihood. I think he'll be ready to go. Um, you, you of course have Justin Lawler who can come SWB off the practice audio squad. Captured, I think they decided not, not to do it this week because he was hurt. Um, because they added Buddy too. Howell and they added Ta- uh, Tyler Hall off the practice I, squad. Um, I'm good about that. Yeah, so you know that's uh, that's upsetting. But then you know in the back and in the secondary, people have been clamoring for Terrell Burgess what's going on with Burgess he only has one snap you know one defensive snap in three games what's going on with him why is Taylor Rapp playing here's what I'll say and then I'll I'll ask you your thoughts on this Taylor Rapp is not bad like I, I there's a lot of people that are just ripping Taylor Rapp and I just feel like you know we gotta look at it like it is if you're not going back and you're not watching the film with Taylor Rapp you don't realize he's doing a really nice job this season um, you can definitely see the sense of urgency in him. He's covering more ground. Um, this is somebody that didn't run well at the combine. So for a while, I think a lot of people thought he didn't run well, period. Uh, he plays a lot faster on tape. But then, you know, yesterday he, he gives up a catch uh, to Chris Godwin um, because, you know, that's how the zone worked, right? So he was covering his zone. No one was on Chris Godwin. So Chris Godwin runs for a first down and people are like, He's way, way, way too slow. Uh, Rap sucks, all of that. And I'm sitting there like, he doesn't suck. You're putting Taylor Rap on Chris Godwin. Chris Godwin ran a four four two. Okay, tough man. Chris Godwin is fast. <laughs> like, you know, he's a tough man. Taylor Rap ran a four seven. He's not Chris Godwin. So you can't hate on Taylor Rap for that. Uh, personally, I think Taylor Rap's had a good season. I thought uh, jo- Jordan Fuller looked a lot better in this game than he had the last two games. I think he has struggled. Um, this game was good. I think it was interesting, and a lot of people want to know why Nick Scott got the reps and Terrell Purgis didn't. I would just say this. I think Nick Scott's emerged as someone they really, really believe in. And SWD as you guys know capture, that have been following registered. this channel, I've been telling you the Rams have four starting safeties, and Nick Scott is one of them. He's a very good safety. He was not just drafted for special teams. He has developed. He's worked with uh, Coach Evero for the last two, three years, and they're reaping the rewards. And that's what happens when you have a good coaching staff, like kind of like what we were talking about earlier, why I feel fine if a guy gets hurt, you can just bring him in. Everything's all good because, oh, well, yeah, it, it sucks that he got hurt, but I believe in the coaching staff to be able to elevate the play of this guy and so this guy got better, and so now we're moving him in. It's like that's what a good team does. That's what a good team has. And the Rams have depth, but they have coachable depth. They have guys that, you know, are getting better, and, and you're clearly seeing that. Rap's improving. Uh, Fuller's improving. Nick Scott's improving, right? David Long. All these guys. Darius Williams was a he was a UDFA signed out of a UAB by the Ravens, had a great preseason. They tried to sneak him on the practice squad, and then he got cut. And then they because they, they had to sneak him on the practice squad to bring Jimmy Smith onto the roster, the Rams claimed him off of waivers. He has since gone from, ooh, this is a nice special teams piece with upside, to now he's the number two corner and playing damn good football. On top of that, you know, you get some good contribution out of your rookie who's super raw, a former, you know, wide receiver turned defensive back, Robert Rochelle. He's played a bit uh, through three games. You're getting production. Kenny Young is so much better this year than he was last year. That, to me, is development, and it's coaching, and it's why the Rams have not just gone from 2017 to 2021 up and down. It's really been a consistent thing. And when everyone wants to point at 2019, first off, 2019 was very fluky. The Rams lost a couple games they absolutely should have won. They got blown out in a couple games. Of course, Cowboys and Ravens come to mind. But the 2019 season, that they were good enough to make the playoffs in today's playoff format, which wasn't implemented until the next year. So if you really think about it, the Rams had 
they've never not had a playoff roster. And the reason is because they're coaching and their GM not being afraid to go out and have a backbone and make a move. And on top of that, it's having players like Aaron Donald that demand excellence and they rub off on everyone in that locker room. That's the thing. When you have Darren Donald and Jalen Ramsey, I mean, we had Bryce Perkins on the show, Alexis and I, and Bryce basically told us straight up, you know, he's like, Jalen Ramsey holds himself accountable and plays at 100% in every practice, and that is why he's as good as he is, because he demands excellence. And then that, you know, people see that and they're like, you know, I want to be as good as Jalen Ramsey, and then the coach pulls you aside and see, you look at that, are you willing to commit to those hours? Are you willing to work as hard as him? Because you will not even come close to him until you get to that point. So He's just, I don't know. Our team is just going to be really good when it comes down to these, especially our good players. Like, I, like you even said, when it comes down to like Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey, they are really, really tough players. And even like you said, when it comes down to what they do, they rub off in practice or you know anything else, they do. Like, there's a reason why some of our cornerbacks try to, you know, go the same way um, Ramsey does. Like, they're trying to play a lot of phys- – they're trying to be physical. It's really good, too. You saw what they did to Gronk. Yeah. Like, they're trying to be really, really physical, and it's working. You love like, to see that. Oh, it, it does suck the fact that he got injured, but that's on him. Well, he should have worn his little protection. Yes, but, exactly. Like, that, that's not that's not our problem or anything with that. He should have worn it, and he got hit hard. That's where I think, you know, it comes down to how, you know – how Ramsey can play, he plays physical, very physical, and it rubs off on them, especially with, like, the duo with them. You got SWB um, Audio and, um, Capture, Ramsey, not really registered. Good. Like, I think we, we, we have a lockdown defense. Like, even with our, you know, our uh, safeties, they're good. Like, I, I don't know why people could say they're really bad. You know, they could be garbage or something like that. They aren't. They keep, people they are going to say consistent. what they want to say. You know what I mean? They're, they're consistent. When, they're, when you're consistent, you can't say you're bad. Like if yeah. you're consistent and you're, you're even improving and you're getting these plays down. Like if you leave one play open or something like that or two plays open, it sucks. But it's better than leaving all your plays open. Like there's a man that I've seen and it, when it comes down to um, Damon Arnett on the Raiders. He cannot play. But they still play him, and that's what you don't want to be. He leaves everybody open. He gets beat easily. He can't keep up with everybody. But like I said, our guys keep it consistent. They will, they will fight. I was until so wrong about they can't. him. What? I was so wrong about him, Arnett. He, I thought he could be good, but he just doesn't. I don't know. I don't, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I mean, but meanwhile, <laughs> you know, I'm not trying to throw my Alabama uh, love out there. But meanwhile, you know, you have Trayvon Diggs and, uh, you know, in Dallas, you know, balling out. You know, you have Patrick Sertain. He oh, looks like an absolute cool. monster in Denver. I mean, let's call it like it is. Alabama corners are looking a little bit better. I think at this point, Alabama just had a lot of people because they were pretty much good. Yeah, I mean, like they just get everyone even talks about it. They say like, "Oh, Alabama had the running backs," <laughs> and they got some of like uh, their defense is really good. So they get, everyone gets their defense. Like it, at this point, they're just everyone's like Christmas. We'll just grab. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. You know, and now here's here's the funny thing, okay? And, and I want to point this out. The uh, the Rams have kind of been pigeonholed as that team that only has a quarterback for two years. I've seen SWB this audio because capture, not it's registered. been like, well, Stafford's only going to play for two years or whatever. <laughs> After watching yesterday, if you think Stafford's only going to play – for two years uh, he's happy <laughs> I, I mean he's not leaving la i, I hope people realize that like I, I genuinely hope you're not hoping like i genuinely hope you're not sitting there crossing your fingers that the rams aren't going to have stafford in two three years he's probably going to play for the next five to seven and it sounded to me like when he was talking with the media it could be you know the next 10 years and if this guy wants to play as long as tom brady and wins a super bowl in la guess what he is going to be royalty that's what's not being explained here the rams have not won a super bowl since 2000 and the rams have not won a super bowl in los angeles they lost in 79 to the steelers it's the same organization right but in los angeles they have not won a super bowl they won an nfl championship in 51 which for whatever reason we don't care about nfl championships but that's the that's wrong on the nfl maybe focus a little sure. bit more on pushing that but what i'll say is that 
people are not willing to realize the what would happen if if Sean McVay wins a Super Bowl with uh, Matt Stafford. If Matthew Stafford it wins a Super Bowl, wins Super Bowl MVP, it's not going to be the Kurt Warner effect. The Rams are going to never treat a quarterback like that ever again. So it's going to be Matthew Stafford. It's going to be his thing, and it's going to be like Tom Brady with the Patriots. They're going to be royalty. Like He's going to be royalty to them. And honestly, the way the Rams run a tight ship – and the fact they have Stafford, and the fact that they were that good with Goff, and Goff's not bad quarterback, right? Goff, he's not that bad. Goff's above average, I, I would say, average to above average. They were the they were that good with Jared Goff. This is what I keep telling people. Stafford is so much better, and if you don't realize that by now, at three and zero, beating the Buccaneers, audio then you never will registered. because. You know, it's all, well, he needs to hold the Lombardi trophy up. Well, then what happens when he does that, you know? So I, I'm not saying 100%, you know, that, you know, Matthew Stafford's going to win five Super Bowls or anything. But what I will say is that the Rams have been consistent. They've been consistently winning with Sean McVay. It's why they have a 40-0 record when McVay is coaching while leading at the half. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Which is unreal. Sam. It's fu- like. that, that number is five more greater than his age. <laughs> like that is just that it's crazy um now what was i gonna say uh what's up nolan i just saw that he joined what's up uh lewis um well, can't uh, see these comments <laughs> p, uh, p train i uh was not talking specifically about you i uh when i said people ragging on morris I was talking about the people on Twitter that are constantly saying that Morris's defense is trash, which that's wrong. If you just beat the Bucks, there's no way you can say, "Oh, they're trash." There's no way. That's stupid to say. Well, it's it's, oh, it's constant. It's like, "Oh, well, the running game, I don't believe in the ru- the running game. The the run defense isn't good. Run defense, all that." And then all of a sudden, like we what, do you, oh. what do you know? The run defense holds, <laughs> you know, them to no yards whatsoever. Tom Brady's their leading rusher. Uh, they held Jonathan Taylor, who's one of the best backs in football, to 3.4 yards per carry. Uh, and to be honest with you, you know, I said this when it happened. Montgomery had a 40-yard scamper that really made that 100-whatever yardage game that he had uh, inflated. Uh, so when you take that away, you know, really the Rams' defense has been great. And furthermore, when you look at Staley's defense, they are allowing fewer yards on the ground than Staley's defense did. And I actually have the stats right here to tell you. So in the, that that three game stretch, Brandon Staley's SW defense allowed 358 rushing yards, registered. and the Rams for this season with um, with Raheem Morris have allowed 278. So the Rams have been great against the run. Huh. I mean, I, I don't understand why. The, like, why are we still talking about this? <laughs> because the great announcers. The announcers think they're gods, most of the time at least. They think they know everything. Like, I understand stats can be a big thing, but I don't know. If, if you look at the game and see how people are, it'd be very different. We we basically ended up beating um, the Bucks' confidence. Like we beat them. As simple as it was, when we threw our seventy-five, you know, yarder, it, we beat them. At that point, it was just them trying to keep it in. They weren't gonna do much. Even even before other games, there really wasn't a fight. The only one that was really a fight was the Colts, but that would be more or less because of our little small mistake. It's a little oopsie. Yeah, no, <laughs> like, exactly. And even then, people look at them and think the Colts were a great team, or they were a good team, but it's basically luck. When you get luck, it's, if it's on your side, you can get far with it until it runs out like they did. They ended up losing, like, losing their luck with that and killed them. I'm happy that we're three and zero. You know, like it, it, it can be really hard, especially in a league when we're we're going against hard people, like tough people. They were all playoff, you know, contenders before. I think some of them, even you know, one of them went to the Super Bowl and won, and we ended yeah. up beating them. Like you're right, all of them. By the way, here, fun fact for you: the Rams haven't played a team this season that didn't make the playoffs last season. They will play their first team. <laughs> in which they play that didn't make the playoffs last year is a team that they beat to make sure they didn't make the playoffs last year, first off. And secondly, they're probably one of the best teams that they'll play all season long, the way the, the uh, Arizona Cardinals are playing. So, Dad, 
I think we're one, one of the best like defenses that they're, we're gonna have to SW go against. SWB audio because, capture like, not <laughs> registered. Monsters. They went for a lot of people. They got when they went out for a lot of people. So it's gonna be tough to see what we can do, but I feel like we can do it, no doubt. Like it's just I hope our line can hold, which I think they can. I think they will. I, I have hope in them. So it's even so our wide receivers are just amazing. I think they're gonna be easily get easy plays on them, but. That's just hope. <laughs> I don't know. I just hope we don't die. So against the Arizona Cardinals, I'm feeling like the Rams are actually going to give Kyler Murray some problems. The Jaguars oh, yeah. gave Kyler Murray problems. But for, furthermore, um, you know, I, I look at that game as the Cardinals secondary is suspect to me. I feel like <laughs> obviously Minnesota could throw on them. I think Jacksonville could throw on them. Yeah, Jacksonville had a couple horrible decisions that blew up that game. Uh, but Jacksonville was winning at one point. I feel like the Rams at home, uh, Arizona hasn't looked like the greatest road team ever. I think the Rams at home, I think they went comfortably. Right now, if I had to make a score prediction, I would probably go with 41. Well, no, no. I'll, I'll probably go, yeah, I'll, I'll go with 41 to 20 right now. If they're, yeah, I say if, they're, if the Cardinals' defense – is playing and they're being competent and they can actually protect the deep throw, then I think we're going to be a little bit lower. I think we're going to like roughly in the thirties. I can't say the the exact number, but I I think we're going to thirties, but I think more like close to the, you know, early thirties. I don't think it's going to be like, um, unless we, if our, if we are, if we can get our deep play in, I think, I think 40 would be really good. I think that'd be our, our top score when it comes down to it. Like every week, I've been already saying he's gonna get at least 350 yards per game when it comes to Matthew Stafford. I think he can keep that consistent. If he gets a consistent, SWB that's awesome. audio capture not registered. Yards, consistent with like more than three touchdowns. I will say hey. this: if you can do it in fantasy football, if you can get Cooper Cup. If you don't have him right now, if you can somehow trade for him, he has an amazing set of matchups coming up on this schedule. I mean, you go back and you look at the uh, – what was it? Scott just put it in. Um, where was it? You go back and you look at the 9-0. Oh, okay, so he asked the 9-0 oh question, right? Is this a 9-0 oh team? So the Cardinals, the Seahawks, the Giants, the Lions, the Texans, the Titans. Okay, so the Cardinals secondary, as I said, is suspect. The Seahawks mm-hmm. are giving up a ton of air yardage. The Giants' defense, the, the, this is actually interesting. Patrick Graham's Giants' defense really did a number on Sean McVay's offense last year. But that is a problem for the Giants because Sean McVay knows how to scheme against this defense. And they don't have Blake Martinez the rest of the year due to the torn ACL. I love that matchup. Um, you know, I do think Cooper Cup can make things happen even with Bradbury on him. Uh, and then, of course, the Lions... Um, the Lions are beat up in the back end of the secondary. They don't have Okuda anymore. And I just saw, I'm pretty sure I just saw a Fadu Melifanu went on the IR. Um, maybe that was just, I'm going to look that up right now to make sure I'm not just like throwing that out there. But I'm pretty sure what I just name. saw. Um, <laughs> yep, he just went on IR. They signed Daryl Worley off the practice squad. He suffered a bad injury in week two. Expect, expected to miss multiple weeks. So there's a chance that they don't have a uh, Melifanu. So I love that matchup i hope melifon was okay he was one of my draft darlings uh the texans you can throw all over the texans defense and on top of that the titans you can throw all over dude the rams have a chance to throttle teams upcoming and that is what i'm getting at here i think the cardinals and seahawks are being overrated SWB audio um, the capture, seahawks i've said it registered. you guys know okay i've gotten a lot of blowback for saying the seahawks will go seven and ten but the Seahawks aren't scaring me early on. They're losing to teams like the Vikings. You know, they lost to the Titans. They blew a lead against the Titans at home. Um, I'm not impressed with the Seattle Seahawks. And on a short week to get ready for Matthew Stafford and company, I don't like that at all. The only good thing for them is that it's in Seattle. But I don't worry about playing in Seattle anymore. I feel like that's also become somewhat of an overrated home venue. Uh, then you look at the Giants. Uh, the Giants, I don't know what's happening there. They should probably be winning games, and they're losing games. Uh, the Lions, I mean, the Rams know Jared Goff like the back of their hand. That I mean, that could be a serious blowout. 
Um, and then the Texans. I mean, the, the Texans, I like that they're fighting, but this is a team, as time goes on, we're going to start to see other teams really separate until Tyrod comes back and gives them a chance. I think it's putting way too much pressure on Davis Mills, who was impressive, I thought. They just couldn't run the football. And then the Titans... The Titans secondary is just so bad to me. I just, I think the Rams have a chance to absolutely throttle teams coming up and wouldn't be surprised if this puts Cooper Cup on a crazy uh, run where we're talking him at close to a thousand yards by like week six or seven or eight. It'd be unbelievable. <laughs> Especially for people like our, our wide receivers last year, they weren't known to keep like going further. They were very short, which we, we ended up, you know, leading the league in certain aspects of that. But we didn't go far. <laughs> like, we didn't really want to go far. I think we wanted to, but Goff never had the ability to keep doing that after Cooks won. So there really wasn't that deep threat. There really wasn't even a purpose to going deep. But now we do. Almost SWB any of our audio capture <laughs> not registered. The only one really hasn't went deep is Woods. But and he can too. Went, <laughs> I just say he can go deep. Like, do you remember now, the uh, the what was it ninety yard touchdown pass? I think it was. Uh, might have been seventy something yards, but it was a huge touchdown pass against the Texans in twenty seventeen. That was that was a oh, bomb. I, I might have seen it. I might have seen it in certain things. I kind of got into the, with the Rams. I think eighteen, but I started watching games from them. I liked looking at the first thing I remember seeing was Hecker's throws. I saw um, a compl- you know, his own throws, and he does well. <laughs> I'm surprised. <laughs> he yeah. did really good for throwing, especially being a punter. So- yeah, I mean, he was a high school quarterback. Um, I don't think he really played quarterback much in college, but uh, it did translate, I guess. Uh, they haven't really used that. Do you- could you see them going a uh- – all right, I'll 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 tell you this. Since you're on my uh, you're on all my streams, I see all the time in the comment section. We can keep track of this. All right, I'm gonna give everyone an opportunity to answer this. Ready? Over under one fake all season long oh. for the Rams on fourth down punting formation. Over under one fake. He doesn't have to make a first down. He doesn't have to throw a touchdown. Oh, one fake over under. Oh gosh, that's what I'm putting it at. I actually think there's a possibility of him at least doing it once. I that's as simple as I can put it. Maybe one, you know, one or you know, two times. But even then, I don't know if we have that, you know, full ambition to. Recently, I don't know. Recently, I think the same with last year. He never really wanted to do that. I liked when we did that. It. It can shock defenses because it'll be like, oh, well, <laughs> now he's throwing. Like, I, it would be awesome to see. It would be awesome to see. And it would, it would mess people up completely because at this point, they know him as being a man who's like, oh, okay, audio we'll, we'll capture, wait a bit, not registered. And, we'll up, and then we'll kick it. Or we'll punt it. So like, you're going over. I yeah, I think. I think at least one. So survey <laughs> says... I think everyone's going over. So we have Scott, we have Red State Rams, we have uh, Boondi, we have Nolan. They're all over. I'm going to be in the minority here. I'm going. Oh my gosh. Under. Oh. Okay. Uh, Richard Ramos is going over. I'm going to say this. Look, if I'm wrong, I'll eat a shirt or something. Sean McVay. (laughs) Sean McVay has told us all that he does not care about fakes anymore. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. Maybe he's lying. <laughs> you don't know. He <laughs> give him a chance. He does not. He does not care. I care. <laughs> that just sucks. I. I don't know. Maybe like one time he'll sit back and go, "Hmm, maybe we'll do it now." Like if we're losing or something like that, maybe, <laughs> maybe we'll do it. But <laughs> I don't know. My God, I, it's hoping. It'd be something to see, though. You know, it'd be awesome to see. But if he makes it, too, I mean, that'd be amazing. If he misses it, well, it's going to suck. <laughs> yeah, but. I just... Uh, I, I mean, I'll I'll say this. I'd like them to. I just know that they're not going to. It's just a sad little dream. That <laughs> went, that went out do? the window. As soon as they uh, moved on from um, Coach Bones, that went out the window. I really oh. do feel... 
Oh, that just sucks. Eagles just turned over. Oh, there's a game on right now? I completely forgot that there was a game. Oh, Zerline That's... extra point is good. What happened? I feel bad for him. He had been having iffy. Oh, it's like, Ezekiel Elliott. Oh, God. He's a big man with big admissions. 15 yards. Woohoo! <laughs> Yeah, right. SWB oh, see, audio man, capture geez. not when, registered. When 44 yards, jeez. Oh. But darn. You, you, know what's, you know what's funny? Uh, that was random. But last year, I was playing um, I was playing Madden. I was, I was bored and, you know, pretty angry with things. So I went in with one of my friends, and we were playing a small league. I drafted people. And I was like, you know, I'll, I'll go. I went off of, you know, this year's draft. I ended up somehow, I don't know how I did it, but I ended up drafting Atwell. Hmm. When I saw that we drafted him, I was I thought he wasn't real. <laughs> I sat back and I was like, what? I was like, I ended up drafting him. That's funny. I, would, I thought it was hilarious. I, I didn't, no one else I was able to get, you know, on my team that we, you know, we have now, but all I had was Atwell. Man, when you know how to break Madden and use him, his speed is amazing. <laughs> like, I, I love them. Like, same way, I, got, I ended up getting Cup to a 99 that season. He was amazing. I was able to get him everywhere. When like, do you think Atwell gets involved in the passing attack? Or does um, he? I feel like he's, I don't know, he, he might have to bulk up a bit more, maybe get more, you know, see how he is more in practice. But I think near the end of the season, they might throw him in a few plays to see how he does against people. Or maybe the Texans. If we're winning good enough, We'll just throw in people with basically like a you know preseason game. Just throw them in there if if they aren't gonna die. I but I don't know. I don't think that's gonna happen. But I think there's a possibility of throwing in some of our rookies in, or you know just throwing a few people in and to see how they play. Like I that's what I think. But I don't know. It could just be as simple as don't do it. Don't risk anything. We'll just leave it, leave it as it is. Because I know we use out well for you know I think our, our kick return or is it a punt return. I know some people are very. Different. Um, I mean, I saw him out there for both actually. So oh, okay, he didn't then, really yeah. get an opportunity, but yeah, I think they'll SWB they'll have packages audio for Atwell. Captured, um, not registered. You know, and same thing with Jacob Harris. I think they're waiting. It's it's kind of time. that you know it's that rite of passage type of deal. I think they really want him to. They want him to earn it. That type of thing. <laughs> That's but, what practice is for. <laughs> you give them time to see how they can play. Like, yeah. I think I think Harris can be really good, especially for how, you know, we are with our tight ends. I think it can be really good. But I don't know. Like, <laughs> it all depends on how we want to do things. Like, I hope nothing happens. It's like we had, like, I loved some of our backup players from, like, a few years, like, last year and a few years before. I liked uh, Tristan Jackson. I liked him. Mm. And it sucked because I felt bad. I was like, where'd he go? I asked everybody, where'd he go? And he ended up going to, the, I think it was the Vikings. Like, yeah, oh, he's on the Vikings practice sucks. squad. Yeah, I mean, it was uh, a bummer. They really like Koski from what I heard um, and Skoranek. Do you think Ben Skoranek gets more of an opportunity than Tutu Atwell? Yeah, I do I do think. More or less because I think it's the size difference. Mm. Like Atwell's a little bit smaller. It, it, he could be good, especially for deep plays. The problem is if he gets hit too much, like some of these people are really heavy hitters. If he gets hit in the wrong place or basically almost anywhere, he can – have problems. That's why I think I, I give him a little bit more time for him to do something. But yeah, I, think... I, I feel good about Atwell um, down the stretch. I mean, I really think you know he's, he's when we're talking, so. yeah, late in the year, you know, I don't think we'll see Atwell though unless something bad happens to a Deshaun Jackson, a Robert Woods, a Van Jefferson, or a Cooper Cup. So I think it's almost best to not see him this year. Um, I think you know. Ben Skoranek is an interesting one to me because of how big he is. You know, six foot three, two ten, two eleven. You know, around that. Um, he's somebody that I think they might consider bulking up and moving to tight end, and then moving Jacob Harris back to wide receiver. Um, you know, so I mean that that will be something to watch. Now, I, I don't know if you, you caught earlier in the game, but you know, when Higby went down with an injury, um, he came back. But before he came back, Johnny Mont was out there. Um, you know, just basically, you know, when they had five wide, Munt was towards the left end of the sideline. Do you see him getting more involved moving forward, or is this like just the Higby show at tight end? I think they're going to use Higby for a decent amount of time, but we've also kept on to the Munt for a bit. 
So I do feel like we're going to basically use the sort of, I don't know, sort of packages to have like maybe like two tight ends. Um, I don't know, have them like split out or something like that. But I do think we can use them. I, I think he's pretty good. But I also I see certain things with it. But I, I like to go off of how I play with Madden and things, and I get to see how they are in practice or something like that, if I can find a video for it. But like I like them. They're really good. Um, I just hope we don't lose Higby. Like I, I love Higby, especially for how – I am. I kind of wanted to be a tight end for things, but you know, sizes kind of suck. But I, I like that. I like him for that. Like I want to. I looked up to him for a bit of time, especially when I want to try getting the football. Like it, I want him to thrive. <laughs> I want him to get a lot of yards of things. I want him to see. Like he's good. He's really good with things. Like I will never put that as being down with him. If he's a bad year, I still put it as being a decent year for him. Like he never will. Like he always performs. At least in my eyes. No, absolutely. I mean, you're right. You know, and Higby's somebody. I mean, I really like, and I think obviously he can get way more involved because of you know who we're dealing with and the fact that it's Matthew Stafford as quarterback. Um, now wrapping this thing up, how do you want to finish? How do you want to close out our uh, first show together? Hmm. I don't know. I, I you know, I think because I want to see how other people, how people like my predictions for things. Because I, you know, we can end it with my predictions for the season at this point. I'm yeah, go right up. ahead. Um, but I'll start on the NFC for things, especially for Lewis the North. SW, the I audio don't know capture, if it's be good, but I think uh, Green Bay will go thirteen and four. I don't know. I I think they could be a good team. It just I, I don't. I hope they don't play like they did against the Saints. But they honestly hope. But if they're going to try winning games, I hope they just don't do what they did with that because that was miserable. That was a miserable game. <laughs> um, but in the Vikings, I've seen them going 6-11, and 11, but I think they're, they're going to be tough. I mean, a tough team. Um, then I see them right below them is going to be the Bears going 5-12, and 12, and then the Lions 3-14. and 14. Um, I, I kind of just give them free games. I don't know if they're going to play the best uh, – but I, I do like golf. I think golf will make them a decent team. I, not to the point where they're best, like, you know, with Matthew, like Matthew Stafford, but I don't – I think they can perform decent enough. Uh, but they get the South. Um, I see the Panthers going 11-6, which somehow a lot of people don't see that as being I possible. Like, I think they're going to do it. They have a decent schedule. Um, and then I think right below that's going to be the Saints going 9-8. And the same with the Bucks going nine and eight. You have the Bucks um, going nine and eight. Yes, I, I feel wow. as if there are certain there are certain teams like if they can model off like certain like their losses, they can probably outperform them and make them look like garbage. But I don't know. It all depends on what goes on because they've been playing kind of bad teams, except for us. We we, we kind of just made them feel like they're garbage. <laughs> so I I hope that goes off, but. This was business before I saw anything coming through. So I, I wanted to see what go throughout the season. I see them kind of going neck and neck with the Saints, but I don't know. Uh, right below that is the then the greatest team out of here. I'm going to be basically dead last, which is the Falcons, 3-14. and 14. I don't see them really winning too many games. I, I think they can push it, but I SWB don't know audio capture it's not registered. It's going to be hard fought for them. Like, eh. I don't know, but I like I like the East for the simple reason that they're all really bad teams, but <laughs> <laughs> they try their hardest. But I, I think the biggest one that can improve is the um, the football team, the football team. I think they're gonna go ten and ten and seven. Um, I think they can get they scram out some good wins. Um, that's what I hope. And I think the both the Dallas and um, New York Giant. I think they're both gonna kind of tie out seven and ten. Um, you know, like a neck and neck game for the both of them when it comes down to getting wins. And then you got the Eagles, five and twelve. I, I don't really like the Eagles, but they do. They're playing. They're playing now, but I don't see that happening too much, especially with the schedule. It's oh, very uh, weird. Boondy asks if that nine and eight Bucks record gets them in the playoffs. Um, no, I see the Saints actually end up getting that. They're very, very close. I forgot what – I think it was that the Saints end up beating them once, and that was what ended up happening, ended up um, killing them, um, if I'm correct. I think that's what it had because they're both 9 and 8. 
at least in my standards for things. But hmm. it all depends. But that's what I think. Um, and they got our, our the, the West. I think I see us going, you know, fourteen and three. I actually think we can almost, almost, maybe crank it out to only having one loss, and even then, I think there might be a, a chance for us to go undefeated because the team we're playing against are almost all bad teams, unless you want to count certain players coming in. Um, like I think the biggest one is going to be the, the Packers if they play. Um, and then underneath that's going to be eleven and six for the 49ers and and the Seahawks. SWB uh, audio capture six. not and registered. The Cardinals going seven and ten, but I still think they're going to go seven and ten. Like because they've been having they're really iffy. I do think they're going to win certain games, but I don't know. If not, they might get two more wins than I expect. Uh, they're just really weird. Um, but then here we go the AFC. I think. The top of them is going to be right now the Browns going 14 and 3. I hope, I really, really hope that they can play good because it'd be, it'd be really weird seeing the Browns winning games. And I think it'd be pretty cool. But they got a really good team, especially since they have our people. <laughs> they have some of our people, which it sucks to see them gone, but they can thrive on another team like that, especially since they've been upgrading their defense. That's why I think they're going to beat them. Because that like um the North is a very tough you know aspect of things besides the uh, the Bengals they're the only one that's kind of like the the iffy one right like right now they're playing good but like I said I don't know Ugh. um then underneath that it's gonna be the um the Packers going eleven and six um then the Ravens going eight and nine and the Bengals going two and fifteen. Two and fifteen. Two and fifteen, and I think I'm already dead with that because they let me. They have to lose every other game. <laughs> I don't think they're losing the Jaguars on Thursday night either. No, uh, I actually think I ended up having them win. Let's see, I actually think I had. Yeah, I would have already lost that because I had both the Bears and the um, Vikings basically winning those games. They ended up winning against the Jags, and <laughs> I ended up having them beat the um, Lions. Oh, Lord. Um, yeah, <laughs> I was very wrong with that because they they already have my predictions. Um, hey, it happens. Yeah. SWB audio capture not but, registered. And the next one, I I don't know. They're going to be thinking neck and neck with things, but I think the South, it's going to be the Colts going 11 and 6. Um, and the Titans going eleven and six, but um, I think they're gonna be like really like neck and neck with each other for things. That's what I had. I had I think I had ten and seven for both of them. Really? But it, it's really it's a two team division, and you know, and if Houston gets back Tyra Taylor quick enough, they might have a shot. I just I really do like Davis Mills. I can't stress that enough. And people He's that bad. followed my my draft content know I like Davis Mills, but he doesn't have the mobility that Tyrod has. And when things go, you know, to crap, you, you know, Tyrod can scramble and run for his life. Whereas Davis Mills is just, he's going to have to manipulate the pocket and it just doesn't work as well as say somebody with like the legs Tyrod has. So I ho hope he can get back because they were fun to watch with him. Uh, what's up, Darius. How we doing? I mean, we're, we're wrapping it up, but <laughs> I, I just saw that he got here. So I wanted to, you know, let him know. Uh, but I feel bad for the other two. I think I already would have lost with uh, Houston, but the, I think the Jacks are gonna go three and fourteen, and Texans going one and sixteen. <laughs> one and sixteen, I, damn. Yeah, one and sixteen. I don't feel like that. I just kind of looked at them, and their entire team just looks like they're bad. The only thing that was good was, you know, Tyrod Taylor. I think he's the only one that really can keep them consistent and doing things. Like you, <laughs> you saw they they almost would have beat the um, the Browns. They were very close to it if he didn't get injured. Like they could have kept they were keeping that game going. Which for the, their defense being miserable and their offense basically just being good enough. Um, I was surprised by it. But like I said, right now, no, nah, I don't I don't really see them winning too much. I think they're just gonna get they're gonna scrape by with what they got. Um Oh my gosh, I forgot about SWB the SWB audio I put the captured, off not registered. I think they're just gonna be monsters. Well, they they sure look like monsters after losing to uh, to the Steelers. 
Yeah, they they really think they shouldn't have really you know won that game, but hey, their defense played good enough to stop them. Like the Steelers aren't playing defense. I don't know why they have good people, but they just don't really want to play too well. <laughs> so like, they got good players. Yeah, but they just aren't playing at a, a, a level they should be. They're usually a great defense. Like they have enough to stop people. They do stop them, but. I don't know. I, I don't see them doing too much to to really hurt too much with that. I I really do think that you know, like I said, with the the, you know, the Bills are gonna be a really tough team to beat. Mm. <laughs> they they like I could just be wrong with it, but they just seem like a really good team that basically just wants revenge to get back into the playoffs and beat people. Like they just seem like a, a team that wants that they have complete ambition to kill people. <laughs> But I don't know. That's that's me. Um, the rest of them are just kind of be like simple games for them. Like you got, um, I have the Patriots going nine and eight. Then I see the Dolphins going eight and nine, and then I see the Jets going four and thirteen. Okay. I just see them being a little bit iffy. I think the Jets can actually do something. I just hope they don't throw more picks. That suck. Um, then the West is going to be a conte- you know a really contested one, but I think the Chiefs are going to go thirteen and four. Then I see the um, Chargers going twelve and five, and I see the Raiders going eleven and six, and I see the Broncos going eight and nine. And that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so you now have video evidence of your, uh, your prediction. Audio so if somebody not brings this thing up and throws it your way. Well. It's out there. But, hey, uh, it's been a lot of fun chilling with you. Been a lot of fun chilling with you guys. Um, enjoy tonight's game. I'll have all sorts of content coming out this week. I love you all. You be good. You be safe. Be good people. I'll see you guys soon. Take it easy. Goodbye. Yeah.